this club's about winning trophies. I'm inexperiencing a lot of those things. Three new. Sorry for uh, for smiling there. Almost lost the cup and you win it. The new European champions, the treble, the dream come true for you. Oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pod. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? 430 wake up. How you doing? Uh, Manchester United 2, Everton nil. United, about the same when we get a win this season. Not perfect. Not great. Um, but three points. Two big penalties. Both won by Garnacho. He had a great performance. I thought Bruno played well. Uh, and the center back pairing, you know, Evans and Veron. We should have seen those guys a decade ago. You know, we probably we definitely gave up too many opportunities. Open in the midfield as usual. Everton had some chances, um, but United did catch them a number of time on the break. But we get a win. Needed a win. Three points on the board, uh, and now it's onto a big game. What do you say, sir? But onto Cincinnati. Onto the Scouse bastards. Like we're playing Liverpool next weekend. Yeah, exactly. Quarterfinals, FA Cup, something to play for. Big match for this United side. No, this Everton game, three points in the bag on to Cincinnati. That's the mentality here. Hasn't been pretty this season. Sure, would we like to go from open play? Would we like more X threat than Everton? Do we want them to have 70% of the touches in our third? No, we don't want to see that. We want to see Manchester United dominate the ball at Old Trafford and take it to them and kill the game, get the kids in. We did not see that today, but beggars can't be choosers in this type of season, and it's a result. It's a result we would have liked to see against Fulham. We traveled all the way out there. We'll take it, whatever it takes. And Garnacho shining. I mean, this is the one that you got to highlight is the young kids coming through at Manchester United at the moment. This is what is exciting. He won both penalties. He's a firecracker in the penalty box and ultimately had the quality to get us the win. Uh, Bruno and Rashford converting the pens, you know, not too shabby there. And then uh, getting a clean sheet. Shout out to Onana. Shaky start to the year, finishing strong. You know, a lot of clean sheets for him, stacking it up 2 0 to Manchester United. Lots of positives going around in the front office, director's box, owner's box. A lot of good momentum at Old Trafford. It's just the football. It could look a little better if we're being honest, but you know, let's just enjoy the day. I love it. I appreciate you, sir. I mean, it's so true. It's like we can totally tear this performance apart. You know, talking about how many chances we gave up to Everton, how we didn't create enough um, sustainable opportunities for United. Good on the break. Some of the passing is fucking scratchy. Dude, the giveaway. I mean, come on, we've seen it all season, bro. The reason that we've they've we've given our opposition so many opportunities this season and been so open is oftentimes we're very sloppy in possession with the ball, give it away, especially when we're trying to pass it out of the back, forcing opportunities that we kind of gifted some chances to Everton. Yeah, Everton's always good for a win. Even a shit United side like we are, this season's basically a write-off at this point. We know we know the right on the wall. Management has come in. They're going to want to change in the summer. A lot of negativity surrounding the club, but a lot of positivity surrounding what they're looking to affect, right? Like the stadium news, we're going to talk about that when we get into the news. That's a big change coming. The front office is coming into play, right? Ashworth's gone a little quiet, which makes you think they're trying to get that deal you know, set up for the summer. Hey, like you said, beggars can't be choosers. We've been begging all year, and you know what? It's a th- it's three points. Far from perfect, far from beautiful, but uh, I'll take it. Hey, I'll take it. Uh, quick PSA for the podcast. <laughs> you like the American Red Devils? We are for fans by fans. Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a way you can support us directly because we don't have any sponsors on the podcast. We have a behind-the-scenes episode every single month. Tons of other benefits. Please check it out. Uh, also check out our Discord. It is always hopping during match days, uh, during the week. Lots of funny fan comments there. AmericaRedDevils.com for our blog content. AmericaRedDevils.store for our merch. Keep Alex busy. He ships it all out of his garage. So anything you order supports this small-time operation. When I say, say small-time, it is small-time. Sir, tell us about iTunes reviews and other ways you could support the pod. 
iTunes reviews and five star reviews of the American Devils podcast. It's a great way to support the pod. It helps us get found organically by other fucking top Muppets like us and you. And even better, we're giving away free merch. Free merch for supporting the pod. All you have to do is write a five star review on iTunes or Spotify and send a screenshot of that review to American Devils at gmail.com with your mailing address. And I'll personally pick, pack, and ship free ARD gear designed by John. He is the creative genius behind all of our gear. Uh, you know, I'm just the muscle, and I'll get it right to your door anywhere in the world. Here's a great review from Lord Dawes, no, number one United Pod as United follower from Long Island. I really had no place to go for in depth pre game and post game talk until I stumbled upon the pod, and now it's essential for game days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, all the American Doubles listening in and writing these five star reviews. This ain't the five star Reds, this is probably the three star Reds. Um, but the three point reds, clean sheet. And I think, are we back to even in goal differential? Uh, what a season it's been. What a season it's been. We're talking Manchester United two, Everton nil, Old Trafford, 4 30 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> oh, oh, Nana in net, Delo, Johnny Evans, Varan, Lindelsoft at left back, Maynu Casemiro. Midfield two, we had Garnacho, Rashford, McTominay, and Bruno in the 4-2-4. Interesting setup from Eric Ten Hag. What'd you make of this 11? McTominay, Mick Casserole. <laughs> Mick Casemiro. Uh, you know, back four basically picks itself given the injuries. Lindelof, you know, maybe you could have seen Kambwal at right back to low at left back, but he opted for Lindelof at left back. I think the big omission, and I'm, I was glad to see it, to be fair, was McTominay instead of Anthony. Uh, instead of trying to put Rashford at number nine and then just sticking Anthony on the right, he did, he did the same thing he did against City, which is the they kind of played at 10 as a default backup nine. Like, they switched around with Rashford. So I, I thought that was the right move. Anthony's been completely ineffective this season. Um, so not a whole lot of shockers here. You know, same lineup as last week. It's got to be good enough to beat the big blue Evertonians from Liverpool, right? No, absolutely. It's kind of interesting with the McTominay false nine, you know, almost playing with two tens with him and Bruno kind of all over the shop. I, I just don't think we figured out the midfield. Tons of turnovers today. I think that reflected this uh, mashed potatoes 11. But like you said, the back line holding strong. That's the huge positive. Most injuries there. You think we would be like leaking goals and to have a clean sheet. Absolutely huge. First half coming out. Everton with a huge chance. Their own Nana. Uh, he- almost a header on the doorstep to start the game. Manchester United conceding right away. Second minute, right? Yep. Seventh minute, Bruno finds Rashford on the break. This is what we're playing for. Counter ball all day. Uh, last man back puts in a big block against Marcus Rashford. And then it wouldn't take too long. Twelfth minute, Garnacho would get his opportunity here, sir. Get the foul. It's all the way up. It's a long run up. It's like a minute and a half. Here we go. Here we go. Got all the well, All right, biggest. here we go. Garnacho. He tried to click into some sort of gear. Rashford. Garnacho. Oh, down he goes. Penalty. Tarkowski tempted to have a nibble. Clear pen. Tarkowski, you know, great defender. Garnacho. Fast feet, fast feet. He bites. Clear pen. VAR it's checks it. It's place. in. James Who's Tarkowski up at the knows. spot? It's going to be Bruno Fernandes against the, the poor team. man's Peaky Blinders. Jordan Pickford. Shorts a little tight. Shorts are tight. The tight for is now complete. Lines have been drawn. No offside offense. So the penalty stands. And Bruno Fernandes. 32 penalties for Manchester United. He scored 28 of them. But he had a penalty saved not so long ago against Chelsea. Take his time. Bruno Fernandes at the Stratford end. And after a ropey start. It's been a while since we played that song on the podcast. Great penalty from Bruno Fernandes. Even better for Garnacho to win it, sir. You can tell a lot about a man by how tight his athletic shorts are. Jordan Pickford can't get to it. Those shorts too tight. <laughs> um, a lot there, sir. 
Garnacho does well. Garnacho was our most effective attacker today by a mile. He was involved in everything. He had a bunch of good chances from open play, to be fair. Uh, this is a little, you know, I'm a, I'm a Muppet first and foremost, but I thought this penalty was a little soft, to be fair. Like, we've been denied no. penalties that no, were more clean cut. No, that's a clear pen. You can't. Yeah, I mean, it is a clear pen, but it was. It's a, a stab in. It's like, yeah, I agree. The contact is light, soft. but it's it's more it about. It is a like, penalty. In the modern era, it's a penalty. I'm just saying as a purist, sir. Like, we've been denied much sir, more I'm, Stonewall penalties this season. You just amaze like, me. You right? amaze the me. Muppet, like, I'm blown. My mind's Muppet blown. I've seen, I've seen like, not no penalties, and you're like, that's a clear pen, and you're so fired up. I mean, and it is this a clear, is a clear pen. pen, and you're like, pen. it's not a pen. Like, what are you talking it about? It is a pen. I'm just saying. I wish it wasn't a pen, and we'd be given other pens that we needed more. I'm I'll glad you it. said I'm a Muppet uh, first, because, yes, there's no more Muppet take than that's not a pen. It is a pen. It's a soft pen, but the Premier League's gone soft, so there you go. I thought Garnacho was great. What? Good finish from Bruno. Still confused. It was a soft pen. Still confused. I have no I have no idea what we're talking about anymore. All right, 13th minute, Everton, big chance. They go wide at the other end. McNeil slices a good opportunity just wide. 28th, Bruno denied a second goal from a free kick. This one. Good take. Good Shorts take. were not too tight. If I was playing, you go baggy. You probably want to show like upper quad. You like the tight, tight shorts. I'd be You're rocking a tight like the, shorts guy. I'm like a you know baggy shorts guy. Maybe it's just from the long johns. Like you know how the goalie sometimes rocks like the long, the long johns. So they just like maybe Under Armour is the modern. Yeah, seamless leggings. All right, you know like the the Haya leg game. Um, but you know. would have high. Your shorts though would be t- well. If like I hot, if I tight. if my if I somehow made it to the EPL, I'd be yes. going for like the, the Grealish. Like biggest calves you could think of, roll the socks down, show Yes, them you'd off. be showing as much leg yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah. Leg, I'd be like kind of Bruno with the baggy shorts, right? I like you know? the Bruno baggy. I can't get out. I was kid of the 90s and one, you know? Like that's just the way it is. Uh, 36 and minute, that's a, that's you know, big and back. one. But in North back. Jersey, you know, the, the blocks, don't forget. 36 minute here, uh, another penalty chance here. United on the break. Garnacho would get another one. McTominay. Here is Garnacho. McTominay's continued his gallop forward. Garnacho on and on. And it's another penalty. Won by the same player as the first one. Any doubts about this one? No, this is Stonewall. The speed. I think it was the speed of the first that one that kind of threw, throws me off when it's in slow mo. He's been. It looks less. United's most potent this is, threat. This is an obvious pen. And it's a clear penalty. Godfrey. No clue. All right, let's get to Rashford oh, at the given spot. To Curry for descent rather than to Godfrey for the foul. It's Rashford's record from the spot of late. Hesitation. No clue as to what followed, because it was a penalty struck with certainty and accuracy, and Manchester United lead by two. Unusual procedure to have two different players take two penalties. But he scored a penalty at Goodison earlier in the season, Marcus Rashford. Great finish from Marcus. Garnacho again. I mean, the difference maker. Been pretty much the difference maker for United all season. The kid's really saving us. Uh, he was excellent today. Uh, and he, you know, his best opportunities for United came off that right wing. I'm excited for Hoyland to get back into the fold. The best football we've played this season on a relative basis has been when we had that front three with Hoyland up front, Rashi on the left, and Garnacho on the right. And he was excellent. You know, cuts in, stone cold penalty, Bruno. Gives one to Rashi. He knows Rashi needs a goal. Um, and Rashford finishes well. So United, you know, not perfect. We, we've seen this all season. But they were clinical on the counter and drew some big chances that led to penalties. And <laughs> most importantly, we converted. So two goals going into halftime. But, you know, this United side never makes it easy. Giving up chances like we did in that second half, sir. Yeah, no, I think the second half is kind of we get the two goals. The third one kills it. Are we going to get the third one? Are we going to give up tons of chances? Ben, don't break. It's the theme of the second half. 51st minute chance for Everton from a free kick, but McSauce does well. Puts in a big block. 59th, Bruno finds Garnacho. Great chance in the box, but slices it just wide. 
We had two or three solid chances here in the second half. 63rd, Pickford does well to stop a dangerous United free kick. 68th, Everton with the chance. They blasted over. Another one, 76th minute. This is the golden chance they squandered. It was right in front of net. Fizzed across goal. Man was on the ground, couldn't put it in. This one, I felt like, was their best opportunity of the second half. And we, we did give them opportunities. No, we did, for sure. They, they had more golden opportunities in the second half. That's the problem. I mean, United, man. It's like, well, even when we get some things going, get some penalties, you know, have a lead. How do we respond? We were two on the back foot until they started getting some of these really good chances. I thought the center backs played really well. I thought Onana had a decent game as well again. Um, I think Evans and really Veron, you know, Veron has showed his class throughout this season. You know, no matter how bad United has been, he's going to be a big miss next season because it's looking like pointing in all directions that we're not going to even find a compromise on a new deal with lower wages. He'll probably go off to the promised land of Riyadh and make big, big money in the Saudi league. We can only hope. Um, well, we're not going to get any money for him because he's out of contract. But uh, he's going to be a big miss because he. I thought he was great today. I thought he's been a good player all season. Uh, and he hasn't been injured somehow. Like he's been played like 20 games in a row, which is a shocker. Uh, subs, the manager making the adjustment here, 79th minute. Uh, I'm, ro- I'm a robot. I'm a rombot for Kobe Mainu. That's a little bit of a downgrade there. 83rd minute. Uh, Got to get your boy some minutes. He's got to work off those uh, that transfer fee. Anthony coming on for Garnacho and Kambwala for Evans. I get Kambwala for Evans. You know, great uh, standing O for Johnny Evans. It's been a great story as a United fan. Anthony, I'm Rabat, like these guys. I just don't see it. I mean, I'm Rabat is like like for life. CDM for Omenu. And, you know, you're on protect the young lad. He's 18. Anthony's the, the more egregious one. But Ahmad. Dude, Ahmad. He, of course, I agree. Like, no, one, no one's going to argue for that. But the guy's like... He's a manager on the way out, and what do managers on the way out do? I mean, listen to Ole. Ole's interview this week on whatever pod he was on, you know, with the boys. Um, they talk about, like, loyalty at the end of the days. At the end of days, you play players that are going to play for you, even if, you know, like an Anthony. He shouldn't be at Manchester United. He's not a Manchester United caliber player, but he's here because of Eric Ten Hag. So he knows he'll, like, maybe run around for him. He, he didn't do much. He had never does much. And I want to see a mod, but you know what? Under the next manager, we will see a mod. I have hope, right? Because of of all the right wingers that we tried over the last five years, Sancho's a bust. I don't think Facundo's going to have what it takes to make an EPL, but I do think a mod has it. He just needs minutes. 94th minute, United uh, do win a penalty, but Rashford is just off. It was good to be the penalty day. Uh, Match reactions uh, on the XG front. We had 2.49 to their 1.48. X threat, they they dominated us. We had 0.99. They had 2.09. X threat being what areas of the pitch were they threatening in? They had the ball in our third, way more than us at home. 70% of the touches in the final third went to Everton uh, versus Manchester United. Again, not what you want to see. Possession split down the middle, even 50-50. Shots 23 to Everton, 15 to United. Eight on target for United and six on target for Everton. Like I said, possession down the middle. Uh, But really, the craziest stat of them all is we have conceded 50 shots in our last two matches. 50 shots. I mean, that's the story of this. There's a lot of stories of this this season, but one of the stories in terms of like a big material change removed of the personnel issues we've had this season with injuries. Like, we're just so open in the midfield. I mean, like, it's not good enough. It's been not good enough. It's been all season. It's every game. We're giving chances. You know, one thing to give chances away to like City, best team in the world. Everton are not the best team in the world. They're not the best team in Liverpool. Um, so we have to do better. We got to figure that out. And uh, yeah, but you got to figure it out. No, like, you got to figure like, it out. Here's the deal. We haven't like, figured you... it out. And if you're going to get a result next weekend against Liverpool, you have to figure it out. Because if you give them 15 chances, they're going to score three or four goals. And we're not going to score more than three or four goals. So. We got to figure this out. I think the I think the biggest issue is we are not figuring it out. I think that's the you know again for me and any serious football person that looks at the numbers, you look at the formation, you look at the setup, the tactics, and why we are not playing well against Everton at home, regardless of injuries, because every team has them, including Everton or any other lower level opposition that comes to Old Trafford. 
We are wide open in the middle of the park. We can't solve the midfield. We can't control the match, and we have to play counter hero ball, which again, today, Garnacho, the two moments of brilliance that got us the goals to win it, uh, it's, it's not sustainable, especially at an organization like Manchester United, right? Uh, an organization that's striving, like uh, Ratcliffe said, to play the best football in the world. We should be slowly stepping up the ladder, completing passes, dominating the midfield. Like we saw those patterns last year. I think it was very evident that when we started playing better, started seeing better patterns of play. And obviously this season has been a different story where we aren't seeing that and we're not seeing the improvement consistently over time. And that's why you can win two nothing. And, you know, as a fan, just have this weird taste in your mouth where, you know, the next one's coming and we got to play Liverpool twice and they're our biggest rival and you know they don't have a lot of these issues but you can make mistakes but you can't make them twice and I think this new ownership is going to be very ruthless when it comes to looking at the footballing situation at Manchester United well that I mean that's why there's going to be a change it's like you know if you look at the win rate of the manager in the first hundred games that wouldn't precipitate a change but the football we've seen this season removed of the injuries it's the lack of ability to adapt which we saw last year under the manager he was more flexible i think this year he's dug in and you know dutch stubbornness on display all this season to his detriment you know the more flexibility you show i think he'd be rewarded and when he has been flexible this season which hasn't been enough he's actually been rewarded so that's it you know that's the reason you're going to have a new manager in the summer almost certainly um is because united has not adapted to the injuries in a way that makes us, you know, punch up. Like, we haven't been greater than the sum of our parts this season. And that's the indictment. Every manager has to do that. They have to get more out of the team than they have out of the starting 11. And that's what's going to take to chip up this table and finish the top four and compete for titles. And that's why you're going to see a change, right? They have a great opportunity to kind of have a clean slate, fresh in the air. I think they're going to grab that opportunity, given the negativity surrounding the club. Um, at the same time, like they haven't seen the adaptability, the flexibility that you want to see from an EPL manager from Eric Den Hag this season, and that's what that's going to be his death blow. No, absolutely, and uh, you and obviously we're going to be talking about the Scouse Bastards, but you know we went to the EFL final and saw an injury riddled Scouse Bastard side play against the billion dollar Chelsea Blue Bottlers, as Gary Neville has coined them, <laughs> and what did they do with injuries? They played the exact same way that they play without injuries and they took it to him in the same exact style and the next man up plays the same way as Mo Salah would play on the left wing he might not finish like you saw Gap go couldn't finish for his, any his, his salt but the opportunities were created in there for him with United injuries it makes sense but you got to be playing the same type of way you have to be seeing these repeatable patterns maybe they're not as efficient with younger kids or backups etc but right now we're seeing mashed potatoes midfield with healthy starters or not, and it's just all over the shop, and it's a theme that sucks to see, and obviously we're jumping into the table. The Scouse Bastards, you don't like to see it. They're number one, cheating. That that uh, referee gave them that call not too long ago. City behind them with 62 points. They get a call at every game. Bro. No, I know. They get it's like going to be a clock. 11 minutes to stop it. It's because they want it. It's rigged. It is it's rigged. rigged. It is. Everyone knows it. They're going to give them all the calls in the end. I, I Until mean, next weekend. If we even have a sniff at it, they'll still get all the calls. Well, it's a big game tomorrow. Uh, City game. going to the Anfield. That's really it. City win, and it's, you know, that's see, set, you, see that, you later. They can kick on from there. Liverpool, Scouse Bastards, 63. City, 62. Arsenal, 61. But again, we're not a part of that conversation, sir. Aston Villa, 55. Tottenham, 50. Manchester United, 47 points. We play 28. Tottenham's 26. Villa's 27. Tottenham win two games in hand. They play tomorrow. Villa, Villa, Tottenham. That's big for us. We probably want Spurs to lose. Because we're going for fifth. We're never going to make it to fourth. And then, obviously, West Ham at 42. So we're safe in that sixth spot. But what do we know? Let's check in with the main man, the manager, Eric Ten Hog. Was that a much-needed three points today? Every game we have to win. So every game is a must-need. The guys have just been saying how important Alejandro Garnacho has become to your team. Has he become a vital part of that attack? He's uh, progressing very well, and we are very pleased with this. And I think uh, his contribution today again was huge uh, with his runs, with his dribbles. Um, it's good, um, attractive as well for the audience. Also, we want to show something 
but yeah, we're great dribbles. Uh, I think well deserved penalties. Overall, in the performance today, do you feel that the levels were where you would like them to be? In areas, yes, especially uh, in in our attacks, in our counter attacks. I think we had very good breaks. Uh, sometimes we can make better choices to to rest on the ball in such moments eh, uh, where we can't go for goal. But we had very good breaks. I could uh, we could easily score three four goals instead of of the two uh, from the penalties. Uh, we defended very well, eh, but in the build-up, I think we can be more say calm and composed on the ball. Uh, Everton did well, good high pressing, but yeah, that gives a lot of opportunities in behind, and yeah, and we had very good runs in behind, and so uh, we created a lot of chances as well. All right, sir, what do you make of the manager's assessment? You know, uh, this is just like there's like a gauge of how much bullshitting the manager does. You know, he 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 didn't bl he didn't blow as much smoke up his own ass as we sometimes <laughs> see with his United side, and actually called some of the things that we need to work on. Right, rest defense, ability to be calm on the ball. Um, probably, you know, here's the I think we deserved to win, but like we didn't make it easy on ourselves, and they probably deserved at least another goal, or at least a goal. Right, could have been two one, could have been three two. Um, bro, he he did he knows. He knows. We all know it. Like, it, no, it, I don't. If we think, hadn't seen so much chopping and changing over the last five it. years. Like, the, you feel it. It's like you can smell it at Old Trafford. You know, a change is coming. No, it's an emotional thing. It's like a manager. It's, it's hard, bro. They're like tunnel vision, right? They're like, there's, you know, what I mean, like they're they're kind of set in their way. And even when they know it's going one way and not the right way, it's very hard for them to take their head out of the sand and be like, what the fuck's going on? I gotta like, I gotta change it up. Because, I don't know, it takes a certain kind of temperament to make it to the top of managers, right? No, no, e exactly. And, uh, again, he went with the diamond midfield today. Uh, second time we've seen that, you know, what you see at the end of a manager's run is chopping and changing, new formations you haven't seen, like three at the back from Ole. He did talk about that in the interview. Uh, defensiveness in the press. We've seen him arguing with journos about, you know, how good we're playing. Uh, and uh, loyalty. Loyalty subs, Amrabat, um, uh, Anthony can't stop coming in, and uh, mediocre results. And then the only thing we're missing is that death blow. Uh, but speaking of our next match in the death blow, sir, uh, we're playing the Scouse Bastards FA Cup quarterfinals Sunday, March 17th. Come on, United, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. I like that kickoff. 11.30 a.m. Eastern. It's 4.30. If you're not nervous... You're not a United fan because, man, this one is clot. The whole thing, it just sets up for as soon as we drew Liverpool, I was like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have moved on to the quarters because two times we have to play them. And the narrative of Klopp's last run, and he just wants blood. He wants to, Klopp wants to just take us to the sword. And it's also, you know, they're a better team, better squad, better coach. Um, but it's also like the narrative is going to be so exhausting if and when they win. It's just like they, they lick Liverpool up, up and down, bro. Like they do it in America with NBC Sports. They do it in Sky, with Sky, uh, Klopp's kids, even though like technically United's play like 20, 20 times as many minutes for teenagers this year, um, with our young lads. So they're going to just, you know, it's going to be bro. Like the quad, they'll be talking about the quad, the quad, the quad. So United, dude, we got to keep it tight. We have to basically not give up. Chance after chance after chance. You have to do the approach that we did at Anfield that did work. You know, wasn't pretty, didn't thrill a lot of United fans, but honestly was the strategy going away to Anfield. is probably the strategy because you're playing a better team and United have been so out of sorts. It's like, you pack it in. You don't try and play the super high line. You pack it in. You why? play counter. You why? Because they're a better team than us, bro. What do you you had like... There's a strategy going to Anfield. Yeah, there's a strategy going to Anfield. And there's a strategy when you play at Old Trafford and you're wearing the shirt that says Manchester United and so you try to win the game, sir. I'm trying it's to win a the cup game. competition. A -attack, you got to win, dude. You got to win. I'm not saying not, don't try to win. I'm just saying that's the only way we would get a win. In it's, my mind, the only way we get a win next weekend is if you pack it in and play counter ball. Okay, there's, I would say you're right. That is fair. That is absolutely reasonable, but there's a two. I will say there's there is a play defensively minded, and then counter punch, and then there's what we saw at City, which is like turtle up. Like that's that's Don't two that. different things. I'm not for I that. mean, for me, like yeah, I agree. Like totally play counter against Scouse bastards, um, and 
that's what we're going to see. But like what we saw at City was like a sadistic version of that where we weren't even playing the sport, it, you know. And I just think that at that level, going that deep, defending that deep, and just getting like turning the ball over over and over again, it just gives me like anxiety, sir. They're also not as good. I mean, let's be honest. With the injuries, this Liverpool, I know they're ahead of them in the table, but City are a better team. Now we can make them look just as good because we're so we've been so shit this season. But United, obviously, the bar is not City. That was a fucking awful watch. So we we watched these two teams two days back to back when we went to Yeah, they're much better Europe. than us. I'm and aware. it was like they're and by the way, team. that was like not the best Liverpool team. They like he started like a B team in the EFL final. With like Gapco and all this, and it's like they played way better than we did, like than we did against. I'm Fulham. not arguing it, that, sir. I'm and just I'm just saying like, it's going to be tough for United. It, it is. It, they're it, a good team, bro. I mean, they're good. They're at the top of the table, and they're on the last season with their manager. So like, they have momentum. The players actually play for their manager, and yes, they're, they're going to show yes. up. And they're going to show up. They're going to want to win. They're going to be like blood in the water. And the last time they were at Old Trafford. Uh, well, we won, but like, you know, 2 1. So I don't think we're going to get that kind of result. But United, the only way we got a chance, in my mind, is if we play sound defensively and don't give up chance after chance after chance. And that win was the win that turned it all around under Eric Ten Hawk, right? You know, and it's like crazy how far we have fallen. Jesus but, Christ. sir, let's get into it. Like I said, Sunday, March 17th, 8 30 a.m. Pacific. Great kickoff. Games won 90. Drawn 69. Lost 81. They First time we played them, 1894, test match, Liverpool versus Newton Heath. We lost. Last five. Oh, sir. They beat us 5-0. They beat us 4-0. We beat them 2-1. They beat us 7-0 last season. If you recall, uh, that was at Anfield. And then we drew them 0-0. That, that great vic- victory that uh, that you're talking about was the 0-0. You, about, you know I'm saying? You're like, we got to do the yeah, same thing we did away. Yeah. We got to draw them. You know, it's like that's where we're at as a fan base. So can we just admit it? Like, you know, it's like we're like excited to draw them at home. And it's like that's how far we've fallen. You're excited to draw them. Is that what you said? Those to get a draw? That come out of your mouth? No, I said I'm not. I'm saying like, you're, you know, you're like, oh, we got to do the same thing we did away, which is basically like. Was that a bad performance? Not great. It wasn't bad. Like away in the league. Yeah. But you like the, assuming the, you beat them at home and then you draw them away. Yes, that's a good that's a good way to think of the of the. Of the ties. Well, we haven't played them at home yet, and I'm not saying we're going to win, but like that was not a bad performance. I, I guess, like, you know, Monday morning quarterback, you said it was a terrible performance. No, no, I'm saying game, if you United do that, held in well, if you try to not score and draw at home, I say that's like you need to win at home. We that's did the only not difference. We tried to score. We tried to, we tried to score. We were ineffective in score. And if you remember, actually, like, Tomady had a chance to, to steal it at the end of that game with an open header and probably should have scored. Um, but dude, this is good. We're up against it. Like, look, we'll get into the odds. They're a better team, better momentum. They're playing better football. Like I said, but the, I think the only way we get a result is if we fu- we try to go with a sound defensive approach and counter. And otherwise, no, like, that's if we exactly play toe right. To toe with them, no, they'll beat us up. The only I'm just trying to say when you play them in the league, drawing at Anfield is like tech. I view that as a win every time. But at home you got to go for the you got to go for the win and especially in a cup competition. That's all I'm trying you do to do. I lost the win. Uh so last 5 they smacked Brentford 4-1, smacked Luton Town 4-1. They beat Chelsea in the AFL final with kids. They beat Southampton in FA Cup 3-0 and they beat Nottingham Forest 1-0. Obviously we don't like them. They're our huge rivals, sir. He's playing the 4-3-3. Allison's out in net, which is good. Van Dyke, though, is in. Kanate, uh, McAllister, he was a player when we saw him. Diaz, Gapko, and Elliott, not bothered by that front three. The real question is Nunez and Salah. Salah is on the return from injury. He's not back yet. And obviously, Nunez has been playing. Uh, he scored that goal against Nottingham Forest. So, not the best Liverpool team, honestly, if you had to look it on paper. And this is something that you have to say is like, this team's fighting a lot of injuries when you look at this 11 and they're winning the league. So this whole idea that United and injuries, I just am a little sick of the narrative. And especially when they come to Old Trafford, they will not be fully healthy. So it's one of those things where just watch. It's just like, I think there's a shot we could win in the cup. I think in the league, it's probably going to be they're coming. And Salah will probably be back. But this is a chance to steal a result. And I just want to make sure that we try to play in a way to steal that result. 
I'm with you. I mean, this is a great opportunity. This is not the team that came in and we got rolled 7-0 at Anfield. Uh, and this is probably not even the team, the same level of players available when we drew 0-0 at their house a couple of months ago. So it is an opportunity to play. We have our own injuries. That list is not not insignificant. I think the big one is going to be Hoyland. If Hoyland comes back, I have a lot more confidence because the attacking three, the best we've looked all year is when we had that front three starting to click. And he's a huge part of it. He's a part of the press. He has come into form and is scoring goals. So if we got Hoyland back in it, I have a lot more faith. Mason Mount, I think he's going to be a breath, of, a breath of fresh air for the last bit of the season. He's supposed to be back after international break. We're up against it, but like the best chance we got is that like we are, you know, we are facing a depleted side, right? They don't have some of the players in the midfield. They don't have Mo Salah. They don't have their best player. Alexander Arnold's out. So it's like we, we got to shout. We just like who's going to show up? Is United going to go flat foot? Or are they going to like be trying to win every 50 50 in the opening 15? And if they go flat foot, we're going to get rolled. And if they are actually fighting for every, every, every ball, then we got a chance. Yeah, it's That's just it. here's the deal like playing City. And the Scouts Bastards, this could be tough until, you know, the, we until do this whole not. rebuild. We tough until it's, uh, it's just going to, like, we're, you know, it's just right now, we're not playing great. Don't have a lot of great players because a lot of them are injured. And uh, it's a tough time to be a United fan, you know? You can hear it in my voice, a little pissed. You know, we used to be, like, dogging these guys, having a laugh. Like, they were us 10 years ago. Andy Carroll's of the world, like Craig Bellamy, like they had no yeah, money. Where are bro. we now? And now we're like, yeah, now we're there. Now we're there. And like, we never thought we would be there. Now we're there. And they're just like, every time they play us, they're licking their chops. They're, just, they're oh, excited. Neighbor. They're trying to like get every last bite off the bone, bro. They want everything. They coming for it all. They're going to pick the bones, sir. Like, like that. <laughs> you know, nothing left on the wing. They're going for it all, sir. Licking it all up. And your neighbor, this guy, you oh, had someone sir. move across the street. Tell the story. Um, so, you know, live in a neighborhood, like a lot of folks, and I put the United flag up a couple, probably a year ago, and we have a new neighbor moved across, right across the street, like he probably moved in 18 months ago, and I put the flag out, and all of a sudden, I see a different shade of red, another team of the north. And he countered me, man, right across the street. He but he bu- also he- hung it in a way where, like, A, there's no pole. Yeah, he just it's like, like he hangs frat, it like, frat, like, he did like, a frat house Like hang. a frat house, yeah, like, frat house, like front vertical door hang, hang. Like, over have, the front door. I have a pole. Like the scouse my... shack across the street, bro, you got over there. It's no, like the be, scouse shack. Well, it's punitive. like this guy, like, he, he, no, he, like, hangs his flag like he's got no flag pole. It's exactly a scouse. They want, they are. He's it's very, exactly. I he, met the guy. He parks his truck on the lawn, like, the you know, absolute lunatic over here. Uh, they won the EFL title. He hasn't taken the flag down. That's the real complaint. It's like, you won. You, come on, bro. It's like, we won that shit last year. It's no big Sir, deal. Sir, you'd have it up for like. No, I didn't have it for a week. Sir, we're thirsty. We're you know, thirsty. we're desperate. So I, that's the extra salt. Go out. Okay, here's the deal. The kids, Is the United the flag going up? Is the United flag going up? And we'll have flag to no, flag before the cup game. No, only if we win. That tells you everything you need to know. That's like, you got like low flag energy over here. Look, you got to be like, put the have. flag up. It's nah, got to go up. Nah, nah. It's got to go up. Flag's got to go. You got to go toe to toe. If we win. No, it's, no, that's such. I'll tell you. You you, then you put a flag up at your house, bro. Put it up. You got to put up. No, the, no, 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 no. Okay, here. We're going to do a poll on Twitter. No, be like, no. if if the poll <laughs> says he's got to put it up, yeah, you got to put it up. John also has a house. Any self-respecting John, John fan, even when your team's bad. You got to put the, the flag, flag up. Is also, gotta my go flag up. pole is also broken. It's got to go <laughs> it, it up. Got, Whatever. Fine. Then you got to stand on your lawn. You got to wave it. Big talk. Totally, I, I am up, baby. This guy also has a house up, up the street. Stink you guy. You can borrow my I flag. Up. All right. Let's injury get into injuries. <laughs> injury loss. Go on. Luke Shaw, Martinez, Martial, yeah. Malasia, never coming back. Uh, the rumors are he's not coming back this year. Brutal. Uh, he's been gone. Uh you know, no social posts for like 280 days. Wild, actually. Hasn't been seen. Uh, so, I mean, it, 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 that situation is kind of rough. You hope he's all right. You know, you, you would want him to come out with something. You like, I, I thought you know, he I, just I, fight know, last year. Could, Young? Who, is his career over? I hope is not. he like have a, like, did he, you know, something personal going on? Something's, that, that one's a weird one. That that's a very strange one, and even and when he went down last year, they never really made it. They're like, not like, oh, he's gonna, he's got a big knee injury, which we found out like secondhand. They never were upfront about. No, it's very Malassia's injury. Ever. I know, and then he had a setback apparently that put him out for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's just very kind of murky, and the fact he's not even on the socials either is just a little concerning. Uh, Hoyland, 
Uh, Mason Mount, my man. Dude, hasn't played shit football all year. He'll go. He will literally. He will, you tell you Mason about? Mount will literally skip this whole season and come back and under a well. new regime yeah, and then probably, be amazing. Yeah, I'll probably play And really I'll be well. like, you know why he played well? It's because he's untainted. Sure. Whatever you, AWB, whatever you baby. Think. Harry Magoo. Uh, and that's about it for the injuries, sir. Given those injuries, what is your starting 11? Uh, who, uh, I think what we've hear, heard from the manager before this game was that the players that, are, that could be back in contention for the Liverpool game is AWB, Magoo, and uh, Hoyland. So I think both, all players are going to make it back. I'm going to do a not in net. I'm going to do AWB at right back. I'm going to do Veron Maguire as my center back pairing. I'm going to stick to low at left back. I'm going to do Casemiro. Kobe, Bruno, Rashford on the left, Hillen up front, Garnacho on the right. Probably the best 11 that we've seen in recent months given the injuries. So if those guys come back, Hoyland, Magu, and then we actually have two fullbacks on each side, even if the low's playing out of position, gives us a sniff. Sir, what, what's your 11? I I think we're going to see something similar yeah, to what we saw right. today. Right. Um, the diamond midfield's coming. It's what we did against City. Um so you're going to see the Delo, Johnny Evans, Veron, Lindelof, Maynou, Cass, McTominay, Bruno, Garnacho, and Rashford. That's literally what I think you're going to see the same thing we saw today. Um, Maguire, does he take Evans' spot? You know, maybe. I, I just like, of course, it just comes down to injuries. Evans has been good. I mean, Evans has been good. I mean, never thought we met up with him what, a little over a year ago. Uh, in the Abu Dhabi workout room, sir, that he'd be like starting for Manchester United week in week out, and I don't think he thought he'd be starting for Manchester United week in week out. No, he's uh, no, he. Literally, we were talking to him, and he thought he was going to go to MLS. <laughs> he was asking Good us guy. about like the yeah, MLS. Yeah. He's like, where, he was like, oh, move? America. You know, he's like, where should I? I was like, Cali. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Good start, California. Uh, booking the bookie, sir. Let, let's uh, let's get into that. Money, 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 money. Uh, United underdogs going in to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. United plus 280 at home. So three times your money, plus 290 for the draw, and then minus 135 for the Scousers on the road, sir. Given the odds, what is your score prediction? Oh, shitfootball.com loses 3 1 to the Scouse Bastards. Be lucky to get a goal. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, they're not, maybe it could be 2 1, 2 0. You know, I'll say I'm going to revise it to 2 0. I don't think we're going to get a goal. But that was my score, predict. 2 0. Uh, Liverpool, we don't get a goal. It's like one of those where the score line looks less bad than it actually was. You know, like the 2 0 City loss against Ole at the, at the end. Um, we're like, they, you know, they had the line share chances, line share possession, and United, you know, maybe Onana keeps it just a two. So there you go. And then. Back to the EPL after that, sir. United in the news. Sir, big news coming out today. Breaking during the match. Manchester United back. Sir Jim Ratcliffe's plan. The bulldoze Old Trafford. Old Trafford. Build a new state-of-the-art stadium. I mean, he, we said it. Like, we said it on the pod. I think there's like... It's, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We say a lot of things, said things lot. about Qatar, said things. thing about the Glazers, how <laughs> they have to sell. We said they had to sell, then they ended up trying to sell. We said that <laughs> Qatar was full of shit. Qatar was full of shit. We said that if City didn't ho- sign Kane, they'd get Holland. We said a lot of things on this podcast, and we said they're going to get rid of Old Trafford. And the reason is, it's just such a shithole. I, I, like, I love the hallowed ground. I love the history of the club. I love everything about it, but if you have been there, it is not that great. It looks great. From the outside, it looks way cooler than it is, but there's nothing there. There's like troughs to piss in that leak urine all over the floor. There's nothing there. There's these like steel cage stairs you got to climb up that you're worried about them collapsing in the Stratford end. It's just not a good look. You'd love an elevator, maybe, sir, something like that. Uh, get, or an escalator get, get to take real. you up. Like, like the march the up the yeah, Stratford end. It'd be es- like, you, know, you go to a modern stadium and it's like you get it on an escalator, it takes you up. At Americans least. would riot. By the way, if you had to go Or you have those like stairs. long walkways that are not like just straight vert in like a steel cage. Like, it is very kind of bizarre. And clearly, like, it's just been mod after mod after mod on external, external. And it's just this amalgamation of just like 
there's nothing there to redo, right? And to redo it would, I think, cause more disruption. I, I honestly think the real the real issue is you build the new stadium while you can play at the old one, like, yeah. and that makes more money for the club, which is why they're going to do it that way. It, it's going to do that for a variety of reasons, like you said. It's like <laughs> Old Trafford has so much history, amazing, right? Like 1900s when this club changed its name, we had our first real success on the field. Um, obviously, like World War II gets damaged, they rebuild, they rebuild, they rebuild, and rebuild. And the reason that they need to to start over is because of the level of dereliction of duty under the Glazers. It's like the stadium could maybe be serviceable if actual real money was poured into it over the last 20 years, but they have done nothing and they've allowed the stadium to rot. So, like, you talk about the walking up the stairs. That would be funny in America. You know, Americans would, would like... People would die. They would riot. No, people would have heart attacks. No, they would literally um, die. They would fall over. This is the... I mean, it's going to piss people off from... When you're in your seat, it's the best place in the world. It's like the atmosphere is amazing. The stadium view is amazing. But like everything else is substandard. This I don't like the ceiling... Lo- I like the, how the ceiling kind of bends down and kind of obscures the view in certain seats that, you know, we have been not in. Not an issue for us. Is, no, no, not in our current seats. Old but seats, like yeah. It's the, se- the ceiling kind of like... The angle of the ceiling is like kind of down, and and there's like a top, like it blocks the top Sorry. view. It's, there, there are issues. So the whole idea is this: is like it's bigger issues. By that. the way, it's going to cost the same amount of money. That's it. Like that's, and that, that, it's go. also there like here's go. the deal: it's like if I told you you can get a new stadium for like twenty percent more, right. or we can just like do three years and have it almost cost the same amount, and you got to play somewhere completely different for like three years to redo the old one that it's clear. Like what Tottenham did is they built the new stadium while they were in the old one. You know, I went to the old white Hart lane while they're constructing the new one. You can do that for like multiple years to play in old Trafford. There's not as much disruption. And then you make the transition. It's like, it, it, it sucks. Old Yankee stadium, growing up in North Jersey, went to old Yankee stadium a lot, even went to the Shea stadium. The most there, there arguably couldn't be more history at any stadium than the old Yankee Stadium, and they literally just for America got rid of. It. I mean, like I, for America, but Babe Ruth, like you think oh, of course. all the like how twenty seven World Series, you know, in a there could be like all the sports you talk about, like that stadium saw an insane amount of history, and they got rid of it, and nobody is concerned. Like you know, I remember being a, like younger and being like, "That's so bad, they're gonna get rid of the old stadium." And they got rid of it, and then like nobody's like talking about that now. Like it's not a concern. Nobody's upset. There's no like America should have done something we're different. Less nostalgic about that kind of stuff. No, but they built we're, the history into the new stadium, and there's it's it's a much nicer experience. And that fans, you want to go to a game, have a nicer experience. That's why I think is more important. Actually, here's the, uh, the words of you. Here's the deal. Um, this is a money making enterprise. First and foremost, we're going to be an efficient cash cow machine that shits off free cash flow that they can reinvest into the team um, and kind of like augment different ways to expand the breadth of Manchester United. The current stadium, even if you redid it, is not perfectly facilitated for hosting FA Cup ties, for hosting uh, national teams ties, NFL NFL games, Taylor Swift performances, right? It's like all these things that they can do to bring in (laughs) further revenue they're going to bank on the new stadium. So that's why they're going to build a new stadium so they can basically not just have like 25 games a year where they make money. They can have 50 occasions a year in addition to Manchester United where they can make money. And that's the way this club is going to get to $10 billion. That's the way this club is going to be built to afford to pay off the debt and buy new players and rebuild a couple times. Because guess what? The first rebuild is not going to work. So it makes sense. It's the right move. It's going to be unhealthy. You know, but I think the big deal is like how they do it. Like, you know, it's a good idea, but it's like you got to still have a little bit of like the history vibe. It has to still feel like Old Trafford, even though they rebuild it, which like I do think the Yankees did a decent job with. You know, it's a new stadium, but it has kind of the flavor of the old stadium in yeah, some ways. Yeah, but it's just it, – it's exact, that's exactly right. It has the flavor of the old stadium, and nobody's like – it's just a bunch of bricks We're less nostalgic. and like steel. Said, Americans are less nostalgic. No, right? I don't – I don't like Old Trafford, it's as a functioning – building it's a shithole i mean you got to call it straight i mean like the the hollow ground of the pitch is not but like the actual stadium itself is just like it's, it's in rough shape it's not it's it's so rough it can't be like refurbished no, it, cannot. it would it, fine you can tear it all down and rebuild it right there but that's just going to create logistical issues so that's why they're just going to build it across like in the parking lot uh and then i also what i want is them to do a lot more with the surrounding area it, it's not it's like kind of sad like you know it's like they, they should be doing a lot more Having, you know, like um, 
You went to Green Bay, Wisconsin, so they got like the oh, Hall of Fame really there, sorry, all that stuff, you know. No, but like you they know should what I mean? have like, mixed use, like commercial residential space. They should have condos. They should have more restaurants. They should have more hotels. Yes, exactly. They, you know, yes. fucking light rail that goes from Old Trafford to, da- to Piccadilly, Manchester. Yeah, fuck Jesus me. Christ, getting yeah. out of Old Trafford's a nightmare. Shout out to that Uber driver. There's just so oh dude, what a what a killer he was. Um, there's just too much money on the table. They're leaving so much money on the table. It's a good location. It's on the river. It should be nicer, bro. You should have like. You know, it's gonna piss people off. So apologies in advance. But like, you know, when you go to Wembley and they have all these like giant places to watch no, that's the game what before thinking. the game. It's no, like you it's... have two bars right now. You have the Blaze and you have the Trafford, and they have charm. But there's like, more they're, they're, options. But it's it's not that. It's just but that's really kind of the, the you know. It's not football. easy to get to. It's not easy to leave. There's not a lot there. There's the Trinity yeah. statue. I mean, like you know, they, 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 it's a great place to visit. But I think. Onwards and upwards, so that's the view. It should be a destination. It should be a destination. Yes, exactly. Uh, next bit of news here, we're talking managers. Manchester United being linked to a bunch of them. This is just going to happen for the rest of the season. <laughs> Everyone's being like, has Ineos made a decision? Da, 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 da. Again, here's something I'm going to tell you. Like, Ineos has made a decision. Eric Ten Hag won't be here. Like, just to, It's like, I feel like there's just like a lot of fan love and fan support for the guy. I don't think I hate the guy either. But like, as you you look at it, straight you see it every week you know it and it's like regardless of the injuries or regardless of this patchwork squad 400 million almost 400 million net his boys are like falling all over the place the tactics are rubbish football looks worse it's like this is not like hey vibes fc the guys coming in are cold calculated winners they're not going to take anything they watch what we watch and they're like they're they're looking at these guys on the list and I don't think this next manager is going to be the one to take us to the promised land. He won't be. I think there'll probably be two or three before we take us to the promised land. Yeah, that's right. Could you argue that Ten Hag staying around could be better? Yes. I just think that these guys are going to look at what they're, they're going to look at what they see every week, and they're going to be like, "This isn't good enough, and we need to move on." And it's a cold, it's a cold hard calc, and it's from a new billionaire owner. And I bet you, if you show up for that guy, and you keep making the same mistakes over and over, you're not going to have a job, and that's why he's a billionaire. The short list right now: Graham Potter, Gareth Southgate. Oof. Uh, and obviously Tommy T, Tommy Tuchel, uh, Graham Potter, that one's been linked for a while. Ashworth Deserve Connect, etc. He's also English. Uh, there's something to say about that with Ratcliffe. Uh, Tommy T, bad time at Bayern. But he's still got some shine. You also got Nagelsmann and Deserby. Uh, th- none of these get me excited. So then is it like, oh, I don't I like Ten Hag. I don't want him to leave. But it's just he's good to go. You know, it's like I do like Ten Hag. I do think he's a good manager. I think United ruined him like we ruined a lot of players and a lot of managers. But at the end of the day, you don't get freebies at United. And it's going to be next man up. Anyone on this list get you excited? Let me comment on the change. You're right. It, the real reason they're going to do it beyond like a suck in this season and him being so stubborn is like they're going to have a free opportunity to clear the air. Free. All they have to do is pay up the last year's contract to find a new manager, and that is going to be so valuable because we're not going to finish well. It's going to be the same shit. There's going to be a lot of negativities around the club. When you fire the manager, whether it's the right decision, the wrong decision, or bad timing around the decision, it clears the air, and they're going to want the clear in the air, bro, because United needs it. He's going to get blamed for a lot of stuff. He deserves blame on certain things, but they're going to be like, I have an opportunity to just like start over as we start over, right? We'll have a new front office in the summer. I think Ashworth will be in place. I think Omar will be in place. And they're going to be like, why wouldn't we just want to start over, right? And like all the players could like whine and they can go to the press. Who on this list excites me? I mean, the English people scare the fucking shit out of me, bro. Like Grand Potter is a objectively no, worse course, manager no, that's just... than Ayrton Hogg. So is Southgate. Thomas Frank, kind of a troll. He's a Dane. He's got a nice head of hair. No, um, no, you don't want the Tuchel's like a near term, like help you win now, right? If you're trying to squeeze some juice out. You're not going to win now. I don't think we're going to win now either. So I don't think you need to go for a Tuchel, even though like he could be. If effective. Tommy T wants to work on the project, but you saw him at Chelsea and he didn't like it. He's so a control I, freak. He's, what we've heard is he's a control freak. So like, are you going to be able to delegate to a front office that wants to call the shots, which we now need? That's what. So I'll, pick I'll one. Do. Pick one. You're the you're billionaire hat. Boom. Manager next year. Who? None of these guys. I get the guy out of sporting. You know, that like Portuguese guy that's chipping up. He seems to be a good manager. I, I don't buy the Deserby hype, bro. I'd rather do Tuchel than Deserby. I think Deserby is so overhyped uh, that, like... Cooked us earlier this year well, with course. nobodies, you know? Nope. Had him playing him well. Had, 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 had them playing well. Squad's like 70 million. Uh, look, I... Yeah, I, so, I, so, I so did Potter, it, bro. So here's the deal. It, it don't matter. 
like at the end of the who day. Who you want? Okay, here you go. No, who I'm going to say, I said too cool. so who I want is I want Deserby and I want it to be spun in the way where it's a three-year project. I just want, I want insert young, like Graham Potter, no good. Okay. Tommy T, we're not ready for a guy like that. No, and you need a young up and coming manager. So like, you know, like just like Ten Hog was at the end of the day. But I need this to be spun in a way where this guy is going to be like here for a while and we're going to take three years to just turn it around. Then get the Tommy T to take it over the line. Because the next guy will not land the plane. No, the next he will guy not. will not no. get it right. No, we will you need a manager who can play the way that we need to play in the EPL, right? Like dominate, uh, dominate the ball, be brave, like like Brighton, like Deserby knows how to do. And you need that guy to give time and then make all these changes in the squad. And we're probably going to get worse. But the style of play is going to be there. And we're going to build that over time. And that style is going to work with Ashworth and what he wants. So. Uh, that's why I would go for somebody like that. And at the end of the day, if Graham Potter's doing that, oh. you know, it's a it, that's going to be more controversial from the fan base because I just I think he's just like hated in England. Well, he's not generally. A good, he's just not a good coach. Um, he, but this is a transition manager, Chelsea. so I just like my it's expectations terrible. for this next manager are literally to like be okay with the DOF like making all these crazy changes to the team that are more financial based while he just survives. And then we build it over three years. Like it's going to be a long term thing. You it's could like, like, not going to be like this fast. Get a guy in like Mourinho and try to win. It's going to be a we're going to be shit. The team's going to be shitter, and he's got to have to eat it. You almost need like a competent. You need like a Kieran McKenna or like a Michael Carrick. You just like let him in. He doesn't get to call shots yes, at exactly, all. Exactly. Yeah. But he'll like yeah. make the players work hard in, in theory and like be organized. We just need to be organized. Yes, right? yes. Organized. It's gonna be like, a lot uh, of that. Uh, like, like a manager. We saw it last season. We're seeing none of it this season. It's like just have someone that can go through the motions, show like show up, wane out the squad. We're gonna have to clear out a lot of players. So it's like we're I, transitioning I don't care as much because it's we're gonna get it wrong. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. So we're transitioning from Eric Ten Hag is like Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, six right? He just make six point. He's signing Anthony. He's signing um, Arambat. He's signing these guys. He's picking the team. He's doing all this stuff, right? And the next manager to come in, it's like, he's not going to have any control over that. He's going to be literally given a sheet of players and be like, oh, by the way, we want to prioritize these youth and we want you to sub them in in these ways. It's going to be so much more pre-programmed for the manager than like it ever has been. Just like, you know, baseball went through this transition where the, the manager is just kind of like taking the orders of the GM, really, as far as like hours pitched and all this stuff and rotation. That's what Ashworth and then the... His full staff are going to do it. They're going to be like, hey, this guy can only play this many minutes. This guy can only play that many minutes. And the manager's going to be really more of just sort of like training, like match day motivation versus this whole like squad building, right? That's going to be taken out of his hands. And we need somebody who's just going to be a yes man and dictate what Ashworth wants. Because I trust in Ashworth, we'll find the manager, but this is a rebuild. It's not going to be anything like we're trying to win right now or spend 80 million on bluffers. I agree. We, it's a rebuild and it's a reset. It's also like we're gonna do football like other clubs in the top of the top of the world do football, and you don't just like give hand the keys to the manager. You have to basically let him just focus on coaching and like everything else, recruitment, structure, continuity. Let the front office handle that because that's that shouldn't be their mo at all. Sir, uh, any comments on the Ole interview, real quick? I know this is kind of. Like- a big one that dropped. Um, Fletcher getting demoted. That made me happy. Fletcher, like, you know, um, I don't like these players, these former players that, like, kissed enough ass that they get, like, jobs for the, the hierarchy. Boys. So, like, he should get the boot. That's good. The Ole interview, they all do the same thing, man. You know, I, I made all these great decisions. I thought it was insightful about, like, nobody wanted to be captain <laughs> in certain games. You know, how soft things are. How soft they yeah, are. Yeah, how soft, I, how soft players are, yeah. I thought and that was helpful, you know. Like, they should, why wouldn't you be honest? Just be like, hey, Paul Pogba, like, doesn't want to be the captain because he doesn't want the heat. Yeah, but why don't we find out and five years later? What, why don't we find what out, kind of like, leader when they're doing is that? a podcast? Yeah, exactly. I don't well, understand this. I also just don't understand why it's like, I would just, like, he's going to write a book. Like I can't wait for the Mourinho book. Mourinho will write the book. Oh, he will be the book. I he will read. literally write the book, oh, and there will be a long, meaty chapter about Manchester United. I'm excited to read that one, and I'm excited to read the Ole chapter because he's gonna. It's like he's gonna say it, and he basically said like he was dealing with mental health with these players, and it's like these young kids making so much money in social media, and they're not even focused on winning, and that's what this team feels like. Talked about Gen Z, right? <laughs> like it feels like this year. This like, is what we are, and you know, it's like it's a it's a. An issue the team's got to deal with. I imagine you do the Ole like retrospective. We're going to see a lot of parallels of what we saw this season, right? Like it talks about like players not stepping up. No, next year's going to be like 
like players overperforming, then the year after it's going to be a drop, yeah, right, and man. then that's going to be when it all happens. It's the same exact process. Let's get into fan questions at nmayba13. Glad we got the win, but that was pretty uninspiring. I did get a chuckle when Bruno, of all people, complained about a misplaced pass to him. Very sloppy in possession all game and can't seem to make a decision once we get in the final third. On to the FA Cup. On to the FA Cup, indeed. Let's go. Hopefully it gets better. At Love the Bulls 18. Sirs, wake up at 630 is not for us. Half awake, barely able to see the goals, but hey, a win's a win. Uh, at Mike United Mets, 4.30 a.m. wake-up call comes early, and honestly, it looked like the team was woken up by a bucket of ice water, <laughs> water at 4.30, then sent on the pitch. How many times did we give the ball away our own third? Fortunately, Everton were even worse. Have to be better versus the Scouse Bastards. At Rolling in the Deep, snooze fest, and not the game, not because the game was in the middle of the night, but because we looked pretty uninspiring and slow. A win's a win, but we'll need to do a lot better against Liverpool. It's Sir, amazing you, how good our fans it, are. Our fan, fans are nail it. Like, nail it. Nail hey, it. Nail it. <laughs> thank you for calling us straight. Oh, we got you great know, fans. These guys, like, it's like teams up, teams down. Not being overly negative. Hey, it's all good, it, Like, dude. right down the fairway. It's On the like, Cincinnati. It's like, hey. Uninspiring. We beat the Scouts Masters 3-0. Let's go. Let's have a party. Uh, one at Bride Guy 666, 430 wake-up call. Curse broken. Thank go. fuck. Three points. We move on to the next. Don't mean to be a downer, but we got to be real here. Balls and strikes, sirs. Without Garnacho winning those two pens, we finish with a tie. We can't finish shit. Got to finish those open chances we had. Balls and strikes. I love it, sir. That's it. That's the podcast. You like the America Devils. For fans, by fans. AmericaDevils.com. AmericaDevils.store. Sir, patreon.com slash America Devils gives our top 10 downloads last seven days. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Dublin, Ireland, top of the table. Appreciate all the Irish Reds, uh, LA, California, Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Brooklyn, New York, San Francisco, California, Houston, Texas, and last but not least, Denver, Colorado. We appreciate all the America Devils listening week in, week out. We couldn't do without you. Ooh, are you in for the rebuild? We're here. We're not going anywhere. 500. And change pods down another thousand. Five hundred. Five hundred. <laughs> shit football. We got one cup. Shit fo- one cup. I got a fucking. Shit I got a goddamn scouse bro. flag waving in the wind, staring me in the eye every this morning when I go out to get that. We'll get, we'll get that flag up, bro. We'll get, get that flag. Get your flag. This guy's all get that flag up. John boys. has a house. John has a flag. All build right, a bonfire, sir. Build, build a bonfire. Let's go. <laughs>